Seems like 20 years ago, but back in 2016, Kia launched the Nero, and you could buy it as a hybrid, or you could buy it as a piston car, or in 2018, they launched the full EV version. It didn't look particularly interesting, but it got my attention. I went out to Seoul in Korea and drove it and was amazingly impressed because it was a near 300 mile range, brilliantly practical, fantastic EV. Today, that's the second best selling electric car in this country. They're everywhere. You don't notice them at first, but they are. And there's a reason for that. Today, I'm not in Korea, sadly. I'm gonna be reviewing it in Surrey. And I've got two hours with the new e-Nero that's not called the e-Nero anymore. It's called the Nero EV, apparently. So let's do this. I'm Johnny Smith. Welcome to The Late Break Show. Just for reference, this is what the outgoing Kia e-Niro looks like. The new car looks like this. That's the new car. That's the old car. Dimensions above, but basically that's 45 mil longer, 20 mil wider, 20 mil longer in wheelbase, and exactly the same height. And it looks a bit more sinister. Okay, frontal design of the, not the e-Niro, the Nero EV. They've changed the name of it. Apparently it's better for SEO searchability on Google. Anyway, because the car is launched in three different versions, just like the outgoing car, there are hybrids, plug-in hybrids, and this, the EV, there's probably gonna be a few more apertures for radiator cooling on the piston cars. But this being the electric car, not the case. I like this kind of brow here, and there's hexagonal details. You've got your, you know, your adaptive radar bits in there. But the thing I love most about the new Nero are the headlights. Hyundai and Kia are killing it with the DRL designs these days. They're really distinctive on the road. And I'm glad to see LED lights as standard. The old outgoing car, which I didn't really like the look of, it looked a bit sensible. It didn't come as standard with LED lights, which I think is a bit of a faux pas with an electric car. Got these cool creases in the bonnet, which you probably can't see because it's a white car on a weirdly changeable day. But it's got these interesting creases down here and around onto there. Bit of a clamshell sort of look to it. And then down here, this is uh, silver design. This is top ranking this particular car. Uh, there's, there's four levels of trim. This is the highest. But yeah, a significantly better face. Probably a little bit more aggressive than the VW ID, but I like it. Under the bonnet of the Enero, the engine bay, I say engine bay, there is a motor in there, a 150 kilowatt motor, you can't see it like a lot of things, but unlike the last car, which just had a plastic piece of cladding that was pointless, this now has a fruit slash frunk, albeit only 20 liters small, but this is good. It's where your charging cables can go, and that's useful because your charging uh, port is like the last car right in the nose. It also has this. Again, something that's trickled down from the EV6, its big brother, is the artist formerly known as Vehicle to Load, which is really where you can plug in a three pin plug. The car is now a power source. I plug in the Type 2 there. I can power various things off that. In fact, in a previous video I did on the Hyundai Ionic 5, I powered a bouncy castle. I'll put a link for that up there but you can power anything you want, really. You can even charge another car if you really wanted to. So we're out on the road in the Nero EV. I keep wanting to call it an e-Nero, but it's not an e-Nero. It's been changed, name-wise. And Kia says this is an all-new car, but of course, they designed the Nero to have piston engines as well as EV. So it's not a ground-up EV, but it's a very good adaptation. The same as the Soul um, was, and the same as the Kona, the same as a lot of the Stellantis cars, like the electric uh, and piston, Vauxhall, Citroëns, stuff like that. Uh, and a lot of them have been done really, really well. Loads of familiar items that I'm looking at from the EV6 that I've been living with for about a month now. Let's talk about charging all right and range this thing has an even longer range only by about three miles than the previous car uh, and the previous car was a 285 mile range car a really really good long range electric car and that's actually what makes the nero that's what kind of i think got it 
gained its popularity so much because here's a car that starts at 30 grand that can be a nearly 300 mile range car in fact more than 300 in, in the city with such a big warranty with such practical space inside with loads of kit as standard you suddenly go well you know this is significantly cheaper than a Tesla Model 3 significantly cheaper and a lot of its rivals can't come close to that WLTP range. So in terms of drivetrain, liquid-cooled lithium-ion battery pack um, or lithium polymer, I believe they're LG Chem cells. So it's an adaptation of the existing setup, the, the existing Nero, the existing EV6, Kona, etc. They all share uh, similar parts. And this, you, in previous forms, you used to be able to get this in two different battery sizes, 39.2 kilowatt hour and this, the 64 point something kilowatt hour. But now you can only buy it in the higher size of battery because, according to Kia, nobody ordered it in the smaller battery size because it's about, I think, a four or five thousand pound difference. And I guess I would always go with the longer, uh, the, the, the bigger battery pack because of the journeys that I would do. And it's just peace of mind. And it's never a bad thing for residuals on EVs. Again, quietly said, but one thing that really impressed me with the Nero was the fact that unlike its counterpart, um, the Hyundai, this had fully independent rear suspension in electric form. And this car has that again, that multi-link rear end rather than a sort of torsion type beam setup. So it's got McPherson strut front end, multi-link rear end. This car, I hadn't read about it, um, but I drove the car a couple of miles and instantly thought, this feels quieter. This feels quieter than the previous car. Even on quite pockmarked roads like this, it's a more refined version of the previous car. And you know, the previous Nero, I think was a little bit frumpy in design. This is definitely not a frumpy car. Um, it feels more premium inside than the outgoing car. And you've got, you know, on the, the higher level cars, things like ventilated seats really really good stuff you know um, loads of safety including smart remote park assist lane departure all the usual stuff Kia's excellent adaptive cruise control which I use regularly levels of regen on the paddles here I think it's four levels of regen including one pedal driving if you so wish there you go I pedal is on and that works with the navigation because uh, it knows what terrain's coming up if you've set your nav and the other thing that's clever with this new Nero is the fact that you can put in a charger, a destination charger, um, and the car will preheat the battery pack to in order to accept a higher state of charge, which will speed the process up and make it more efficient. And the efficiency of these cars, this battery pack, this 150 kilowatt, so it's a 201 brake horsepower motor is really good. Seven and a bit seconds to 62, just like the previous car. So it's it's sort of, I think, in sport mode, it's surprisingly nippy. You're not expecting it, but it's actually quite punchy. I recently drove the Megane Electric, which is about to launch. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put that above. I probably think the Megane drives a little bit more tautly, but there's no denying the package. The package of this car is what makes it special. It's that space back there for family and uh, you know kids and stuff. It's that bigger boot. Yeah, it's a slightly rise, raised driving position because it's classed as a crossover. This car, this particular sort of pre-prod car, has got numerous different options on it, which you can get. There's, I think there's three stages of trim, three levels of trim on this. So you can get things like head-up display on the higher level cars, 18 inch wheels, uh, which I don't really care about the size of the wheels. It's not the kind of car which looks better or worse, frankly. But I like the vehicle to device. I like that little fruit, which is good for the cables, for the, for the nose charger. These seats I've found to be really comfortable. Um, and the fact that you can have them heated in the back, that's an added bonus. I suppose the main rival for the Nero was always its brother, the sort of slightly more creative, flamboyant, 
Kona, Hyundai Kona. The Kona's always been smaller than this car and less practical, both in the boot and in the uh, cabin space. But let's talk side design here. Look, it's not exactly interesting, is it? But then the outgoing Nero never was particularly interesting in side profile. The, the wheels, these are 17s, you will be able to order 18s as well. They're not massively interesting. Uh, pressings in the, in the panels, there's not a lot going on. I've seen these indentations in the roof which go into the rear spoiler. They're, they're quite cool, like the ones on the bonnet. But no, it, it, it's, it's just practical and it will be fantastic inside, you wait and see. Oh, this you say, this? Yeah, this is an option. Apparently this is a sort of creative paint finish option. It's not even a decal, it's actual different colored paint. Uh, I would not advise that you order this because it makes it look like you've crashed your car and you're waiting for the paint to be ordered. But there is something interesting in here and you need to come around here to look at it because there's a hole in there through to there for more efficient aero. This is a point, 0.29 coefficient car, apparently. Yeah, the sort of uh, different coloured C pillar, I'm not feeling that at all. It's a bit like the ID3 that VW tried to put decals on it and make it look jazzy. Hasn't quite worked, but I do like these vents. And this comes into the back end now where you've got these kind of vertical boomerang lights. Very different look to the previous car. Not incredible but pleasant, and it's even got a rear wiper. Because don't forget, a lot of people that buy the Nero are buying it for deeply practical reasons. You know, this was one of the groundbreaking electric cars that was medium sized and really long range and exceptional value. But this is one of the other reasons why people buy a Nero. Power tailgate is optional, thankfully. That, that's a 475 litre boot right there. That's, I think, about 100 litres more than the Hyundai Kona. Uh, it's got a false floor as well for untidy stuff that you don't want to put on show. I'll put the boot literage of its competitors above here, but you know, that's bigger than the outgoing car, bigger than its uh, sister, the, the, the Kona. It's just a really, really good, practical boot space. I like that. And a lot of people buy it for that, and a lot of people have bought Nero's because of the space in the back which leads me on to the space in the back. Right, the practical side of the cabin, the back end. First thing I notice about the new e e Nero is how many parts it's harvesting from the EV6. These seats, for example, this sort of ET's head shaped seats with a hard plastic um, USB-C, I think they are chargers in the side of here. All this seems to be stolen from the EV6. Um, this is, I'm told, this is vegan leather, so I guess it's a type of vinyl, and it uses um, elements of eucalyptus trees. Uh, five seat, of course, completely flat floor car. Um, nothing going on in the console here apart from ventilation. On high ranking cars like this one, you get heated rear seats, but you also get an element of adjustment. I think two or three different kind of levels of rake. 60-40 seat split as per usual. I've got loads of headroom actually, loads. It's really dug in quite well. Oh, and important to mention that it does come, uh, or you can order it with an electrically opening sunroof. We live in a world with a lot of pano glass roofs now that you can't open. You can actually open that, which is good to know. Materials wise, not massively creative. I mean, it's not exactly a 2014 electric Kia Soul, which I thought had some really nice lighter fabrics and stuff, but you can buy cloth are on the entry level models of Nero, I believe. What's it telling me? Oh, it's telling me that I'm coming up to a 50 mile an hour zone. That's what it's telling me, it's being smart. I have to say that although it, you know, a lot of modern cars bing and bong and advise you on stuff, the Kia and the Hyundai's have the least annoying of the noises, apart from the reversing sensor, which is a little bit too loud. I feel like I've driven almost all electric cars that have gone on sale, certainly in, in the UK and Europe. And I do keep coming back to the Kia and Hyundai stuff because I think it's such a strong benchmark on which to work from. 
And like I said before, this is a significantly cheaper car than something like the Tesla Model 3, which is the UK's best-selling electric car right now. This comes a close second. Um, and you can kind of see why. I think when you hit more than 275 miles in the real world of range, the anxiety and the need to rely on um, lots of rapid chargers, public chargers, is, is, is so much less. And I can say that as someone that lives day to day with one. Typically on the Late Break Show, 50% of our content is electric car based. I will put the playlist link for all our EV stuff on the screen now. I, I don't think any of the materials inside of the car are particularly wonderful. Uh, there's a lot of recycled fibers. Um, and vegan leather, which is basically vinyl. Uh, but like, for example, the, the pocket in which to put my flask in, my water flask, uh, it's a bit too small and it's not lined with carpet or rubber. So it's actually a bit sort of scratchy, which is okay. But you know, I, I forget all of that because of the usefulness of all of the technology that these cars come with, you know, the heated steering wheels of the world, the heated seats, which is so good for winter driving and the, the, all of the USB ports, um, the cubby holes, there's a lot of them. And this is tasteful, this screen. On the entry level cars, I think this is 8.25 um, or 8.75 inches. This car has two times 10.25 inch displays. This one's touch screen and you can move it around. This one's fixed. Okay, the front of the cabin of the new Nero, this does feel genuinely fresh again there's some familiar items like some of the switch gear uh, from the ev6 and also from the the kia soul ev that i ran for about half a year so different center console that kind of cuts in lots of piano black this neat here um, cubby here which isn't rubberized but it's got two sort of adjustable cup holders and then you've got an armrest with another bit of uh, storage there a rubberized tray there for wireless phone charging stuff like that and on you know like higher tier cars you've got a couple of things not just heated seats but cooled seats ventilated cooled seats which i first experienced i think on a range rover a long time ago i thought they were amazing um the rotary control dial the paddles for adjustable region these are all familiar kia hyundai items the display here this is very very dominant in the car uh, the steering wheel two spoke I'm pretty sure it's the same as the EV6 one, again, with the drive mode button and uh, your keep assist buttons and cruise control. But this dominates the dash. This is on the, on the higher level cars like this, two times 10.25 inch um, screens. This one's touch screen, this one isn't. It's all sort of digitized um, instruments, which you can adjust. But yeah, again, all really familiar stuff. And I really like the way I navigate um, Kia and Hyundai's infotainment. It just gives you lots of information if you want it, but it doesn't bombard you. It's really easy to go through the EV stuff, like delay the charging. The, um, the nav system works really, really well. I just like it. And then here, you've got this sort of touch screen. Can you see this? When you touch this, it will scroll between kind of um, your normal uh, buttons for radio, media, map, nav, and then go into ventilation. Yeah, so some physical knobs. I like a percentage of physical knobs. One important thing I also forgot to mention while I was sat back there is there's a three pin plug. Again, like, like the EV6 and the Ionic 5, etc. There's a three pin plug between the person in the middle's legs. So you can plug in actual household appliances again if you want. Um, yeah, there's a bit of detail here, like neon stripes in this kind of dug in piece of detail. I don't know what that's about. I would pro probably prefer a sort of rubberized practical plinth, personally. And the door, door cards, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, I might have to open the door. This kind of looks like, you know, an oil and water mix. There's a sort of mottled, interesting finish, or almost like a faux metallic finish to the plastic there. But it, I mean, it does feel quite hard plasticky. Um, but you know, in a car like this, I'm not bothered because it's all about the range and the efficiency and the sheer practicality for the, for the money. 
It's not the kind of car you chuck around corners. I mean, the battery pack that sits in the depths of the car, it's 440 kilos in weight. Uh, but the whole car is slightly lighter than the previous car by about 100 kilos, I think. So it's 1,700 and something kilos, which I think is not a very heavy car given the range of it and the footprint of it. I think this is about as big as a family car should get these days given the roads haven't really changed in size and the, the cities haven't changed in width and neither of the towns or the villages. So I keep coming back to that kind of like, what, what makes a good family car? I think this makes a really good family car. Charging times. It will rapid charge up to, I think, 100, 150 kilowatts um, and it'll do tw 10 to 80% in 45 minutes so it's slightly quicker to rapid charge than the previous car the vehicle to device um, idea is, is nifty and i think that's going to become more and more commonplace when we realize that we can feed our house with the car we can go away camping or go out into the wilderness and and do various things and use the car as a, a battery on wheels rather than just a piece of transportation for the first time you can order a kia Nero EV with a tow bar and it will tow up to 750 braked kilos. So, I don't know, tiny caravan, trailer tent, one of those weird little trailers which you take stuff to the tip in, that sort of thing. I think one thing, I was having a quick look through the um, the literature that, that Kia's released to me and the one thing I noticed was the heat pump is an option on this car on all of the um, trim levels, 875 quid option which is a lot, but I think it's important. I think it's one of those, in a country like Britain, which gets cold, I think a heat pump is so important to kind of the efficiency of the car and the comfort. So what do we think? I think visually, I still think the Kia Soul looks better, but I think I'm in the minority. Uh, I think this is probably a, a better bet than the Kona, just because it's got a bigger boot and slightly longer wheelbase. So, you know, they're the same flavor underneath. Much prefer the cabin to the previous car. Much prefer the front end. Kind of doesn't really matter to me about the side and the back. I mean, like I said before, the Nero is not a car you buy because of the incredible design. You buy it because of the incredible package. Again, just having choice. Like brakes are good, you know, the friction brakes, well judged, but it's just having four levels of regen to play with and it's as standard, it's just in there. What do you think of the interior and the exterior? Um, interesting to know, if you are watching this review and you're the owner of an existing e-Nero, are you thinking of chopping it in for one of these? Is there anything that I've told you or that you've seen that you think, I actually preferred the, the older one? This is a 40 grand car, okay? Well, it's shade under 40, um, which I know a lot of people will say can't afford a 40 grand car. But of course, remember with, with a lot of new cars, you don't buy them outright, you, you buy them monthly. Uh, Benefit in kind is zero on electric cars. Tax is zero on electric cars. Lots, lots to like there. But of course, with something like this also, electric cars have incredible residuals, even better than piston cars. And also, that seven year Kia warranty, which is a real like deal maker for a lot of people. I honestly think products like this are the envy of more premium legacy car companies. By that I mean VW, Audi, people like that. Because I do not get out of Kias and Hyundai's anymore and think, oh, if only it was just a little bit better finish like a Volkswagen. No. I think it's a very, very interesting time for that with VW cheapening a lot of their cars. The ID3 doesn't feel special. ID3 doesn't like my fire, unfortunately. Unfortunately, um, we're in a lot of stop-start traffic and we can't really dictate where we're driving today because of the shortness of time we have to review the car. So forgive me. I'm not taking it on big roads and tipping it into corners hard. I can tell you now that the this is not a hard cornering car. This is definitely just a, you know, a family tool. 
Now that was a Renault dealership and obviously one of the rivals to this car is the Zoe, which I've lived with for a long time and I really like the Zoe. It came under fire a little bit harshly, I think, for the Euro NCAP result. Um, but it remains a very practical car and a very efficient car, decent boot. And it, like this, really, it doesn't make a huge statement on the road. It just goes about its business. Here's a question for you. It's about, I think, 10 grand less than a Model Y. It's a smaller car than a Model Y, as in it fits on the road a bit more, but still very practical in almost all the ways. No, it doesn't have the Tesla charging network. Well, not yet. I believe that's being opened up to other manufacturers. Would you have one of these over a Tesla 3, a Tesla Y? I'm not saying a thing, I'm asking. People ask me a lot because of my job and my sort of interest and enthusiasm in EVs, which EV would you buy? And honestly, most of the time I will respond with buy a Kia or a Hyundai electric product because they do everything really well. They're a safe bet. So you want a verdict then? Okay. To like in terms of sheer practicality on the Nero EV, because that's what it's about. It's not sort of design led by kind of latest fashion. It's actually just making, I think, the best value long range EV possible with loads and loads of useful technology and the right ratio of buttons to screens and that incredible kind of warranty which Kia are known for and all of that is what makes this such an attractive proposition building on the previous car which was a really really good if a little conservative looking electric car True. in fact maybe this is the most influential electric car um, in Britain yeah there you go I think they've done a really good job with it it's sensible, but there's an awful lot to like. It's an, a very good car to live with. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Late Break Show. Support me via Patreon. You can get early access to a lot of videos. Um, and I write to you, stuff like that. Not every day. Do a bit weird.